Well, this actually made my day. Out of all these Spider-Man films, some were some were great and some were disappointed. But however, for Spider-Man Homecoming, actually made my day. So better move over Spider-Man 2 because Spider-Man Homecoming is my number one favorite. So here's the review, folks. Spider-Man Homecoming. Hey guys, this is Pierre Marbones 88. And during opening night, I went to the movies and I saw it was Marvel's Spider Man Homecoming. The returning star of Tom Holland, which he's now the new Spider Man, and also that stars Robert Downey Jr., that plays as Tony Stark, aka Iron Man. So, definitely, we have like two superheroes in this film. When I first saw this movie, I was mind blown. I was really surprised. And there are a few changes of this movie, including with the characters, how they're different, not like the same from other previous films. And however, they have like different background stories. But the good thing is, we didn't have to see Peter Parker's origin over again because we already seen it twice. One by Sam Raimi and the other in, Ma in The Amazing Spider-Man. And we didn't want to see Uncle Ben getting killed off again. That's enough of that. So this movie takes place after from Captain America Civil War. And now that we see Peter Parker in high school and he is trying to bring the balance of between his normal life and his superhero life. And along with that, he wants to also try to be an Avenger, joining with uh, Tony Stark and all the Avenger heroes. And how the story is, is really quite different and it really interests me. Although I kind of felt it was jumping the gun too much, and there were some like com comical elements that they use as well from past movies, including when they have some Ferris Bueller moments. I was pretty intense in seeing that Tom Holland can do all these stunts. Most of them, they were all CGI, but he could definitely flip back, flip forward, um, doing kicks. He could really kick some ass. I've been seeing everything about kicking some ass. Maybe I should try kick some ass. Let's see what happens. Okay. Never again. But that was a good stunt, though. A good kick. How the way the actor Tom Holland, like, had the balance of like just being both Peter Parker and Spider-Man. He did a very tremendous job because he could do both. He had the wits and he jokes a lot as Spider-Man and he's always being the geek nerd, the geek uh, bookworm as Peter Parker. Ever since from the last two previous of every single Spider-Man movies, Tommy McGuire, when he played as uh, Peter Parker, he was a nerd and also very sensitive at times. But when he's as Spider-Man, I mean, sure, he can be serious, but he didn't really joke too much, and he didn't really have the wits. But when Andrew Garfield came on the role in The Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2, he had the wits of being Spider-Man, and he joked a lot, and that's what we wanted to see. But he was way too cool as Peter Parker, and being a skateboarding pro guy, I want to see him as a skateboarding pro. So Tom Holland is the third replacement of Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire putting it all together. So that was the next Spider-Man and I liked him as the new Spider-Man. I mean I was a little disappointed that Andrew Garfield left and Tobey Maguire left too. I mean because due to the ever since for Spider-Man 3 that it was become a letdown and same for The Amazing Spider-Man 2 mixture of between positive and negative reviews but most likely I think it was kind of a good thing that they wanted to see the new Spider-Man and having Sony like letting Marvel have Spider-Man and do the, do the movie just right. And as for the villain scene, Michael Keaton aka Batman and aka Beetlejuice, when he played as the Vulture, I was seeing like very sinister but much more of a creeper. I mean I haven't seen him being like a creeper ever since uh, Tim Burton's Beetlejuice. 
more likely that when he's as the vulture, he could be evil, and he could be a badass. Sometimes he can be a creeper, most of the time. And there were some surprising villains in this film, including with now the Shocker. I wasn't really that impressed. I mean, there was like how many Shockers? It was just the character wasn't really that impressive. He was only there just for what? Minimum time of screening? But that was a good thing because we just want to see one villain at a time. We don't want to see like too many villains. Otherwise, it would have been a complete mess like Spider-Man 3 and The Amazing Part 2. I've been hearing that Robert Downey Jr. has been in this film a lot because this is supposed to be a Spider-Man movie, not an Iron Man movie. We want is just only to see is Spider-Man. Only just because that, hey, he's the web slinger, he's young, he's in high school, and he's trying to bring the balance between of his normal life and his superhero life. But more likely, the storyline was very, was very interesting, and even so, that it's very much more of a superhero slash comedy movie. I will be planning to go see it again because hey, this is actually the best movie out of the all movies I've seen of this year. But not too quite, but it's still good and it's really quite enjoying. And if those of you who didn't see it, you've definitely missed something. And also with Marissa Tommy playing as the new Aunt May. She did a good job, and she's still funny. I will always remember her as the obnoxious fiance from 1992's My Cousin Vinny. My biological clock is ticking like this, and the way this case is going, I ain't never getting married. She's still hilarious. So just to rate this film for Spider-Man Homecoming, I'll have to give this a 9 out of 10. I was going to go for a 9.4 or a 9.5 out of 10, but 9 out of 10 is good. I mean, since I had to talk about like some negative about this film, so... But most likely, it's not too bad. It's still a great Spider-Man Homecoming movie. And the characters and the actors and actresses did a great job. And having Tom Holland playing as the next Spider-Man, he did a great job. And he's definitely returning for Avengers Infinity War and future Spider-Man films and spin-offs. If he ever shows up or appear like what he did in Captain America Civil War. Overall, this is really a must-see to believe it. And if you guys are true believers and you are a Spider-Man fan, then you definitely gotta see this movie because it is the best. Promisingly better than Spider-Man 3 and 2. I had to say it, it's definitely my number one top favorite. Sorry, Spider-Man 2. And I'll be looking forward when it comes on Blu-ray and DVD. And this is Pierre My Bones 88 signing off and saying is... Twit, 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 and peace!